are there some generic parameters like uh, as far as what you would tell them to you know stay your saturated fat under this or th th it should be only this you know, it really doesn't even matter if you're total so here's the other thing if you're in a calorie deficit and you're losing weight mm -hmm. Everything else makes no difference. Like all your cardiovascular risk factors that we can measure go down. Like they've done studies where people are in a calorie deficit, regardless of the portions of macronutrients. Like they've tested where like 10% of your calories are fat, 10% are carbs, 10% are protein, and then they play with all the other stuff. And then they switch it around. If you're in a calorie deficit and weight is coming off, Doesn't your matter. cholesterol goes down, your inflammatory markers go down, your insulin resistance improves, your blood sugar goes down, hypertension goes down. Mm -hmm. diabetes goes down regardless of what on earth you're eating if it's in a calorie deficit and weight is coming off not like i'm in a calorie deficit but you're still gaining weight yeah if weight is coming off all that stuff gets better that's why i was asking that question earlier is it sounds like i mean i know you alluded to that obviously the the calorie surplus is what re leads to obesity but it sounds like the thing that is the most detrimental is the surplus of calories consistently right yeah. and because and even if you were an obese person if you immediately get into a calorie deficit all those factors become start better. improving right away right away like even even the studies where they've done only six weeks like all right let's put you in a calorie deficit and it's not even like a huge deficit they're not like uh 20 percent deficit 25 they're like in 10 maybe 15 percent deficit they're just slightly losing weight even in six weeks uh, we notice a huge, huge difference in their um, inflammatory yeah. markers and cardiovascular risk this, markers. This is why every single diet has been shown to improve to health. It's like, oh, you know, vegan, no, yeah. keto, no. Yeah. One thing they have in yeah. common, yeah. They're sure. all they're all low calorie. Now, now, here's the part though that I think is rarely discussed because that, I mean that's 100 percent right. We know that. Um, I, I say that all the time. Like high sugar, high fat, whatever. Boy, the context makes a big difference. If you're in a deficit, it doesn't make nearly as big of a difference as if you're in a surplus. But here's where it does make a difference. How those foods affect your energy, your appetite, your cravings. Uh, you and know. how you look in the end. Yes, yes, yes. Like, you know, there's a, there a, this is a, I'm sure you guys have read about this. There's something called the Twinkie Diet. Kansas State University professor. Mm, I saw The that. head of nutrition. Literally, the head of nutrition was eating lunch with his colleagues, and they're like laughing at him. They're like, dude, what are you eating? And he's like, I can eat whatever I want. What do you mean? They're like, you're eating junk food. He's like, I can lose weight on junk food. And they're like, no, you can't. He said, sure. And these are all his nutrition colleagues. He said, sure, can. I'll show you. He, for the next three months, ate only Twinkies. He made sure he got 100 grams of protein a day because, you know, you have to. It's, mm -hmm. it's insane not to. You end up being, you know, looking horrible. Yeah. He made sure he got, a, he got sh you know, protein shakes and that was all. He got 100 grams of protein a day and the rest of his food was basically Twinkies. And he lost 28 pounds in three months and he's like, here, look at my food logs. Follow me around all day if you want. 28 pounds in three months eating 100 grams of protein a day and basically just Twinkies. Right. right, but I, of course I would argue unsustainable, probably would well, have yeah, cravings, probably want to eat more. Yeah. That's the problem with all, all these that. diets. Yeah. Like I always tell, like I like I have this fictitious patient called Leslie, all right? <laughs> he, he asked, <laughs> Mine is Mrs. Johnson. Yeah, he asked me one day, he's like, he's like, Doc, what's the best diet for me? I said, it's called the Leslie diet. He's like, what? You know, what do you, what do you mean? What's the Leslie diet? I was like, it's your food that you like to eat. It just has to be less than what you're yeah. currently eating. He's like, what do you mean? How do I do that? I was like, well, how do you eat now? Just eat whatever you eat now. It just has to be a lot less. Now he's like 65 and he doesn't care to be a bodybuilder, you know, protein and all that. I told him, listen, if I give you a diet and I call it something else, you're going to do it for two or three months and then get bored from diet fatigue. Like all these diets, keto, whatever it is, I've done most of them. Atkins back in the day, I'm sure you guys remember that, or South Beach slightly after that. It works. It works for a while and you do it. But then like, what do you do afterwards? Am I going to keep eating ribeyes for the rest of my life mm -hmm. or not or eating grains you know paleo diet stuff that was available you know 100 years ago or the, the hallelujah diet the god diet if god didn't make it then don't eat it uh, like if it, it has to come out of the I ground heard that one yeah yeah oh my god there's you just a eat million manna. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you eat like stuff that comes out of the ground if it's god like a if right? god didn't create it then you don't eat it but mm -hmm. anyways like eat whatever you like to eat because that's the only way you're gonna be able to do it long term like Justin's not going to eat what Adam likes to eat, what I like to eat. You know, it just doesn't work. Yeah, she doesn't um, like cheese as much as me. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work. So Nobody just does. Eat, no. <laughs> yeah. eat what, what you like to eat. I told Leslie, listen, bro, you just, not bro. Listen, Mr. Leslie. <laughs> you, hey, bro. You got to eat what, what you like to eat. It's just it has to be less than what you're currently eating. And I give them all kinds of resources to help them with that. But the patients that actually do it, and you'll be shocked. Guess what, how many patients actually lose weight? Or I'm sure you guys know because you worked with clients forever. 
maybe of the 5,000 people I've seen, yeah. like 10% maybe or less, yeah. 100, 120, uh, yes. 100, yeah. yeah. It's disheartening sometimes. But but they, but they really wanted it. Like you have to want it. Like I like I'll I'll give the patients the same spiel every time. Like listen, here's what you got to do, but you got to want it. I don't live with you. I can't force you to do this stuff. Same thing with smoking cessation. But here's what you can do. Do this at home. If you want to do it, I guarantee you. If you do this, you will lose weight. Yeah. But you have to want it. Yeah. You're dealing. You're dealing mm -hmm. with. Uh, I mean, just behaviors. It's just so oh, it's all hard. Behavior. It's so hard to change that in in fundamental ways. And presenting people with all the information and statistics, it just doesn't matter. Even people's own mortality doesn't matter. It's the behaviors. And they're that are seeing so hard. me because they have had cardiac problems. Like they almost died. Usually they had. A and even that didn't give attack. them an epiphany. Right. Well, I can't tell you. Like I've had people have three heart attacks. They're still smoking. Oh my God. I mean, that's why it's so addicting. I mean, it, they're like, yeah, I quit for a couple, you know, a couple of weeks after uh, my first heart attack. And then I was back at it. I mean, it's that it's super addicting. Same thing with people who lose weight. Like they'll like, like all the gastric bypass patients. I mean, you rearrange their anatomy. They don't have an anatomy problem. They have a psychological, behavioral, hand-to-mouth problem. They, you, you, you bypass their stomach temporarily. They lose weight for a year. You guys see them afterwards. What happens after that first year or two? They stretch yeah, that little geez. tiny stomach back they out. Which is, in there. They're really? all back to overweight, some back to their beginning weight. I mean, yeah. it's good because you save their life. Like It's mm -hmm. called morbid obesity because it's you're going to die. That's what morbid means. But you save their life temporarily. You gave bought them a few years, but they have to want it. Like like all my patients that eventually flip that switch, like, Doc, just one day I decided that was it. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with smoking cessation. It, cold turkey works the best. 48% of people who quit forever quit cold turkey. The rest of the stuff is like, you know, random meds, acupuncture, like 1% or 2% here and there. Um, but if you flip that switch and you want to lose weight and you want to get healthy, uh, it works. And, and you can do it, but you have to work.